How you doing guys? Welcome to another video. This is topic 20, higher level organic chemistry. And in this one, we look at electrophilic addition reactions. Now, if it's your first time here, don't forget, subscribe to the channel and make sure you drop a like on it if this video helps you out, because it helps me out. Let's go. So, volume two, what are electrophilic addition reactions? We define what an electrophile is and we look at the major products of an electrophilic addition reaction. The IB understandings and applications focus around the definition of an electrophile and then applying Markovnikov's rule to predict the major products. We need to also have a look at the mechanism for an electrophilic addition reaction of an alkene. So an alkene typically undergoes an addition reaction. That's where the double carbon to carbon bond breaks. These reactions occur in two stages and are initiated by sub or species called electrophiles. An electrophile can attack a region of high electron density, such as a double or triple carbon to carbon bond. Now the definition of an electrophile is an electron deficient species that can accept a pair of electrons from a nucleophile. Addition reactions proceed in a series of two steps and they involve ions, not radicals. So in a, common, a common electrophile is a H plus ion. But two other things that are not electrophiles are usually used in an addition reaction, such as Br2 or X2, a halogen. Now those don't look like electrophiles, but in fact they are, and we'll talk about why in a second. So H+, it's certainly electron deficient and it's an ion and it's involved in the first step of the reaction. Now a halogen, well, as it approaches the carbon to carbon double bond, heterolytic fusion, fission, heterolytic fission occurs forming a positively charged ion and a negatively charged ion. One of the atoms in the halogen will take the electron so it will become negatively charged and the other one will become positively charged. It's the positively charged ion that acts as the electrophile, not the Br2, the positively charged ion. So here's an example of where we have hydrogen bromide, HBr, and we add that to ethene. Now HBr, hydrobromic acid, it's a strong acid, so it contains a high concentration of H plus ions. The H plus ions can act as an electrophile. When ethene is bubbled through a solution of hydrobromic acid, the first stage is the attack of the H plus electrophile on the double bond of the ethene molecule. So here we have our ethene with its carbon to carbon double bond. It's got four hydrogens. And then we add in our HBr, but in this case, we're just interested in the electrophile, the H plus. That's the first stage of the reaction. So what we will show here is that H plus is formed from the heterolytic fission of the bond between hydrogen and bromide. So the bromine takes the electrons, it becomes negatively charged. The hydrogen loses the electrons, so it becomes positively charged and now becomes an electrophile. The electrophile, as it gets close to the region of high electron density, it will be able to accept an electron. So we have the arrows going from the carbon to carbon double bond to the hydrogen ion. That means that we have a breaking of the double bond, forming a single carbon to carbon bond, now with a positive charge, and that is known as a carbocation intermediate. We're still left with our bromide ion, which comes into play in the second step. So the carbocation can now be attacked by a nucleophile. The Br- is now a nucleophile, and it will provide both of the electrons for the bond. So the carbocation is attacked by the bromide ion to form our bromone, ethane, and that's the final step in the mechanism. So here we have our carbocation with a positive charge on that carbon. We have our bromide nucleophile, which has a negative charge and a lone pair of electrons that it can now donate to the carbon. So what's going to happen here is the electrons go from the bromine to the carbocation because we always draw the arrow going from the electrons to where they need to go. That's going to form our final product, which is bromoethane. Now this, this reaction is classified as electrophilic addition because the first stage involves attack by an electrophile. The H plus was the electrophile and it attacked the carbon to carbon double bond. So the second example is where we have an addition of bromine to ethene. So the bromine-bromine bond, it's not polar, so it's not apparently, or it's not really, an electrophile. However, as the bromine gets close to the double bond, 
it starts to become charged. And what happens is one end becomes positive, one end becomes negative. That's the heterolytic fission of the bond, and we form our electrophile, our Br plus ion. So the result of the first stage is a carbocation and a bromide ion. So once we formed our bromide ion from the fission, we have the bromide ion which is able to act as an electrophile. So here we have our ethene with its carbon to carbon double bond. We've got the bromine which undergoes the heterolytic fission. So we now have the electrons which are able to be attracted to the positively charged bromide ion. We again form a carbocation, but this time the carbocation has a bromine atom attached to one of the carbons. We've also got the bromide ion with its two lone electrons that comes into play in the second stage. So in the second stage of the reaction, the carbocation is attacked by that bromide ion nucleophile. It's a nucleophile because it's got a full outer shell of electrons, it's got a negative charge, so it attacks that carbon nucleus with a positive charge. So the arrow goes from the, bromine, the bromide electrons to the carbocation positive charge, and that's going to form our di-substituted bromine, uh, bromoalkane. So we now have 1,2-dibromoethane is what's formed. The double bond has been broken and there's a bromine added either side. So we've added a bromine across the double bond. So now we need to be introduced to Markovnikov. Now this is where we, in an electrophilic addition reaction, if we have a choice of product, we have one product that will dominate. The dominant product of an electrophilic addition reaction to an unsymmetrical alkene has the hydrogen atom attached to the carbon that had more hydrogen atoms at the start. So if we have a choice of where the hydrogen will go, the hydrogen will go to the carbon that had the most hydrogens at the start. So here we have propene. Propene is an asymmetric hydrocarbon, i.e. it's not symmetrical. So if we add in HBr, for example, then we have a choice of two products. We have the choice where the hydrogen could be on the first carbon or it could be on the second carbon. Now according to Markovnikov's rule, the major product will have the hydrogen attached to the carbon that had the most hydrogens at the start. So that means that our hydrogen from our HBr will go on the end of the chain. So we'll form CH3, and then our bromine will be on the second carbon, so we've got CBrH, and then at the end we've got our CH3. So this is 2-bromopropane, the bromine on the second carbon. That one is the major product. Now the minor product would be the other isomer of this reaction. That is where the bromine would be on the first carbon. But that will occur in a lot, a lot lower percentage of cases, so the yield of that one is quite small. So here we have the minor product with the bromine on the first carbon and then the rest containing the hydrogen, so that would be one bromopropane. Now you need to be really careful of this when we start to do pathways because you need to think, I need the major product, not the minor product. So volume two, some top tips. Remember the definition of an electrophile, that could be a multiple choice or a straight definition question. And remember that the curly arrows always go from the electrons to where they're going to go. So it shows the movement of electrons. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.